This is Twit. Let me uh, see if I understand it. I'm sometimes paraphrasing is the best way. It is a yeah. way of using uh, either QR codes or uh, some other secret that's shared, uh, authenticating yourself to web pages without giving, anonymously, effectively, without giving the web page any other information about you, right? And not using a third party service. This is a transaction just between you and any web. Let's say, let's, let's pick a, a website. Let's say Google. Let's say Google decided to implement this, which would be wonderful. Then I would just. <laughs> this is this is what I, explain if I've got this right. I would go to Google and say, "Okay, whip out your phone and uh, snap this QR code," and then I would be logged in. Right. What? <laughs> How does that work? So, so okay, the, the the shortest way to say it <laughs> okay. is um, that you you take a combination of your own sort of like grand master secret key yeah which which n is never used online never leaves anywhere it's so just, it's the equivalent it's, yeah. of a of a private key in a in a in a public key cryptography system no no, no because it's because there you have a matching public key right. this is an an absolute secret that is just it's randomly generated just yeah. pure randomly generated and and it's yours and one of the questions that we have today is well, what if someone else got the same one? Right. So, because because and in a large population of people, That's as we happen. know, right. there's a there's the birthday attack problem, right. which is where it, it's surprising that how how few people you need to have for any two of them to share the same thing, like to have the same birthday and so forth. So you know, there's only 365 days in the year, so there's that many possible birthdays. How many people does you have to have together? before any two of them have the same birthday and the number's smaller than people suspect but so but it, but it turns out that's not a problem here but so you get this incredibly random large number which yeah. you never disclose okay that, that's a key it is never disclosed it's kind of like your is it like your bitcoin uh, address kind of sort of actually it's very much bitcoin is this is also 256 bits uh, i've changed that by the way since last week we dropped it from 512 to 256 just because there was no need plenty. for 512 yeah. bits. Now, with so Bitcoin, you could generate multiple addresses. Can I do that as well? Yes, you can. And so you could have multiple users essentially defined in one little app. But, but let's take the case of one user. So you've got this 256-bit this absolutely random thing that is uniquely yours. What this does is it combines that with the website domain like google.com and and then it, it uses that it uses the combination of the your super secret and the and the website domain where you're going to create a asymmetric key pair to, to create the public and private key so it's like a hash of the two it does it, it uses a an, an actually an hmac um, operation a, a a hashed message authentication code, which is just a, a, like it's a it's a extra secure kind of hash. It just uses hashing operations a couple times to do essentially the same thing, but it's a little stronger in some ways than just a hash because there is a vulnerability potentially because the domain name is being hashed with your secret key. It's better to use. A message authentication code, where which is keyed by your secret key, and then you use that to hash the domain name. It's just technically better, so it creates a little more isolation for like things the user could control, like the domain name going into the hash. But so the idea is, armed with this unique key, every website you use generates on the fly a unique asymmetric key pair and the point is that since your super secret master key never changes every time you come back to that website you get the same asymmetric key pair you know a private and a public key now what we do with that is is simple really um the qr code that you mentioned a phone can can snap it can scan it and we simply Take that and sign it with our public key, and we send that signature and the public key 
to the site. Mm -hmm. So the public key is our identifier for that site. So for example, every time we go to Google, we generate the same key pair. And so we're going to have the same public key. So we always look exactly the same to Google. It doesn't, if we're completely anonymous, it knows nothing about us except this is our token. And, but then the other cool thing is since we've signed, we've, we've signed the QR code with our private key and we sent that along, Google is able to verify the signature with our public key, which is our identity, which proves to Google that we, the person who has this public key, also have the private key because we just signed the QR code that we were given. So it it's very simple. There's like no extra moving parts. Everything is tightly locked together, yet what this asserts is that the same person coming back to the site any time in the future is is the person they uh, that was originally identified. As long so, as you keep control of your private key. Yes. Yes, and that's one of the that's that's one of the most important things.